Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to generate load combinations and specify analysis commands in the STAD Pro Analytical Modeler. In this particular video, we are going to be demonstrating the process for performing a multi-run P-delta analysis. Now, the first step in our workflow is to generate our load combinations. In STAD Pro, we have two different methods for which you can generate your load combinations. You can create a traditional load combinations where a set of load results will be combined algebraically to produce a superimposed set of results for post-processing, or you can create repeat load cases. This would be a primary load case that would use combinations of previously defined primary load cases. If you are performing any type of second order analysis, including a P-delta analysis, a direct analysis, or if your model contains tension-only or compression-only members, you must generate repeat-style load cases so that all of the second-order effects will be incorporated in your analysis. So let's go ahead and get started with generating our load combinations. As you can see, all of the dead load, live load, wind load, and seismic load have already been defined for this particular model. For the seismic load cases, we did define these as static seismic load cases using an IBC seismic load definition. So let's get started by generating our load combinations. To do that, we will select the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar, select the automatic combinations option, and ask the program to generate our automatic load combinations. Here, we're gonna select our load combination code and for today's video, I will be selecting the ASCE 716, and then I will select my combination category. My particular structure has live load that is typically less than 100 PSF, and I will eventually be designing this for the LRFD method. So I'm gonna make sure I select this first option at the top. Now, before I generate load combinations, it's very important that I select this checkbox to create repeat load cases. Again, this will ensure that second order effects are included in the analysis. Once we are done, click on the Generate Loads button and then click on the Add button to officially write those load combinations to the input file. Now here I can see all of the load combinations that were generated through that process. The red L adjacent to each combination indicates that this is a repeat style load case. And now I'm ready to move on to the next step in my workflow, which is to invoke the P-delta analysis command. To start that process, click on the analysis tab in the workflow page control area, and then click on your define commands option. Now, when specifying a P-delta analysis, the program has the ability to include both P-large delta and P-small delta effects. Your P-large delta effects are your second order effects induced on a structure due to the movement of its mass under lateral loads. And your P-small delta effects are the second order effects caused by displacement of the member between the bracing points. Now for this particular model, I'm gonna go ahead and select the P-delta analysis option. And then I'm gonna decide whether or not I wanna do an iterative solution for P-delta or use the geometric stiffness method. For this particular model, I'm going to do an iterative solution for P-delta. And I'm going to ask the program to incorporate the P-small delta effects. Once we're done, I'm gonna click the add button which means that the P-delta analysis will be added at the end of the input file. Now that we've added our P-delta analysis command, let's also go ahead and take a look at the load cases that are available in this particular model. As you can see, this model contains dead load, live load, wind, and seismic. The seismic load represents a static seismic load, which was created using an IBC load definition. Now there are some scenarios within 
STAD Pro where you might be required to perform a multi-run analysis. And let's go ahead and discuss those scenarios now. The first scenario is if your model contains tension only or compression only members. If your model contains these types of members, you'll have to analyze each seismic load case individually and then reset the stiffness matrix before analyzing the next load case. Now for this particular model, none of our members are tension only or compression only members, so we don't fall within that category. The second scenario, however, that you may re be required to perform a multi-run analysis is if you have seismic loads and repeat load cases. So if your model contains IBC seismic loads and those loads are then referenced in a repeat load case, you will have to analyze each seismic load case individually and then reset the stiffness matrix before analyzing the next load case. So for this particular model, we do have IBC seismic loads and these loads are referenced in repeat load cases later. So for that reason, we are required to perform a multi-run analysis for this particular model and then reset the stiffness matrix. We would be required to add an analysis command for each of our seismic load cases. So what I'm going to do at this point is go to the analysis dialog and I'm going to set the location of my cursor. I'm going to click on the second seismic load case. What I want to do is I want to insert a command right above this line. Once I've set my cursor location, I can click on the define commands option. Now what's very important is we're going to select this after current checkbox. What this will do is it'll go ahead and look to where your cursor is located in the input file and insert command at that location instead of at the end. In addition, I'm going to select the analysis command that I'll be using to analyze each seismic load case, and I will be just performing a first order analysis for each of those load cases. So here I've select perform analysis after current. Let's click the add button and we can see the location for that new command. In addition to adding the perform analysis command, this scenario is also asking me to reset the stiffness matrix before going on to the next load case. To do that, I'm going to assign the change command for this particular model. So again, I'm going to set my cursor location on the second seismic load case because I want to insert a command just above that location. Then I'm going to click on the define commands button and I will find this change option. Again, what this will do is it'll just reset the stiffness matrix before going to the next command. I will again select the after current checkbox, click the add button, and then close. In the analysis dialog, I should now be able to see the perform analysis and then the change command after my first seismic load case. So you'd want to go ahead and repeat this process for however many IBC seismic load cases are present in your particular model. Now my model only contains two IBC seismic load cases, so I'll go ahead and repeat this process one more time. Now that we've finished this process, let's go ahead and take a look at the order of loads and analysis commands in our input file. Here I can see an IBC seismic load case, followed by a perform analysis and a change command. Then I have my next IBC seismic load case, perform analysis, and then change command again. Again, you may need to do this multiple times if you have more IBC seismic load cases. Once we're done with our seismic load cases, we can see the rest of our primary load cases have been added along with our repeat style load combinations. Finally, at the end of the input file, we're going to see our P delta analysis command. And for this particular model, we chose to do an iterative solution for P delta, and we asked the program to include P small delta effects. Now there's one additional command that we want to take a look at if we are performing a multi-run analysis in STAD Pro, and that is the set NL command. Let's go ahead and click on the analysis and design tab in the ribbon toolbar and select the miscellaneous commands option. 
Within this pull-down menu, let's go ahead and invoke the setNL command. What this command does is it asks the program to set aside some additional memory space if you have, are performing a multi-run analysis and are introducing load cases after an analysis command. You're going to want to set this value equal to something greater than or equal to the total number of load cases that you have present in your particular model. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 50. We'll click OK. And now that information has been added to the input file. At this point, we'd be ready to go ahead and perform the analysis and review our analysis results. You can also take it a step further and start your design workflow. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.